Any games that you love but everyone else hates? <sighs> Maybe like a like a guilty pleasure game. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what if as a kid you didn't realize how bad the game? That that happens. That definitely happened with like um. Be like Shadows of the Empire, like great game, great atmosphere, but it like the entire difficulty of that game is that it plays like shit and it's hard to fucking move. But 64 sucks. Don't even joke about that. It's so bad that it's good. I disagree. Some things just suck so bad that they go right back to bad. Mystical Ninja for the N64 is also, uh, that's a good run uh, for the most part. There's some weird RNG and really twitchy um, tech to that run. Mystical Ninja uh, starring Goemon is your calm down game. It's a, it's, the music to that game is fucking amazing. If I have 64 games growing up, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Smash Bros, Banjo 2. I never had um, Majora's Mask as a kid. I had to play that one later, um, but I, d I had Smash Bros. Uh, Banjo 2 was another one that I didn't play until way, way, way later. Um, and then Paper Mario was only, was one that I only played at a friend's house. I feel like it, one of my other prerequisites is like, I want to speedrun a game that doesn't handle like shit, you know? This game handles pretty well, um, especially because like you can only go in eight directions. Mario 64, like when you understand it, 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 it is very fluid, very smooth. And Banjo is the same way. Fuck, again, again, fuck! Ugh. Fucking hell. I want to get 120 stars minus 64, and then I reach the last two levels. Very happy with my one. Yeah. I feel like that was the, that was the experience for a lot of people in Mario 64. Um, I remember I couldn't find the fucking... The last star that I didn't know where it was was Princess Secret Slide, but fast. You know, like that second one you get there. I, I just had no idea. And it, it was so frustrating when I when I realized that, like, I could have gotten that at any time. I could That could have been the first star that I got. <laughs> If I if I wanted it to, it wasn't it wasn't hidden behind any locks or anything. But that was the one. That was my my 120th star. So I was like, oh well, I guess there's only one star in this fucking thing. I don't know if I figured that out because of finally looking it up or something. I remember like play like Nintendo 64 was the first console that I feel like I started playing that got me to oh Jesus got me to like go on like game facts and shit. The obvious ones always seem to be the most pain. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm trying to think back, and I don't know if I ever got all the cards in this game as a kid. So that would have meant that I never got to play the um, the secret final level, the fucking rainbow sphincter or whatever. I'm I'm really considering um, jumping into Xenoblade 2. Um, as some of you guys know, I I wasn't a fan of the first one. I had a really hard time getting into it, but. I have a lot of friends who said the same thing, but then they played Xenoblade 2 and, and they loved it. So, any games that you love but everyone else hates? Games that I love that everyone else hates. See, a lot of the games that I love are games that people just don't know about. Like Jet Force, Gemini, Snowboard Kids. I feel like people don't hate those games. They just never played, they never played them. Maybe like a, like a guilty pleasure game. Um, <laughs> I feel like the big ones are, are the, the bad ports of the games on the Switch. I really enjoyed City Skyline on the Switch. <laughs> I played a lot of that. And like, sure, it wasn't the best performing, but it wasn't bad enough that I like couldn't fucking do it. Like I had a great time playing it. Same thing with Witcher 3 on the Switch. Switcher 3, I, I didn't mind. I, I thought it played fine. I, I feel like I have a pretty high tolerance when it comes to just like glitchy shit. Game that everyone hates that I love. Dark Souls. <laughs> But I mean, like, hate it because it's hard. Um, Sudoku for the Switch. <laughs> nah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Pokemon X and Y. I feel like a lot of people didn't like that one. I love that one. That one's great. Uh, but I did not like Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon was a hard one for me to to uh, to get into for whatever reason. X and Y was one of my favorite Pokemon games. Okay, so maybe not that one. I feel like I like I've talked about this before, but like, do you guys agree? Like, most people, not all, but most people, I feel like. They're all they're all on kind of like an opposite Pokemon release enjoyment. So like if you like Dex and Y, you might not have liked Sun and Moon, but you might have liked Sword and Shield. Or you didn't like X and Y, you loved Sun and Moon, but you hated Sword and Shield. Um I was indifferent about Sword and Shield. I thought there was like really cool elements to it. Um it has my favorite Pokemon character of all, which is Marnie. But overall I thought it was kind of a lackluster game. But I didn't hate it. I feel like a lot of people hated it. Like, they hated it because, like, the open world was, like, a complete snooze fest. Yeah. Escape Pokemon Appearance. It's not happening. <laughs> Sorry, Sab. We're, just, we're talking about games that, like, you love but everybody else hates. Friend who likes Hey You Pikachu, but I've seen them play, and for some reason something about their voice makes the game always recommend. Oh, okay. No one is dumber about Pokemon than Pokemon fans. That does sound like something that I would say. People unironically think it would make sense if ice resisted water. Hmm. 
I can see why they think that. I'll say that you somehow give off even cooler guy vibes in person. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I'm always worried that people meet me in real life and they're like, wow, what a fucking douche. What the fuck? You have got to be fucking kidding me, right? This is a joke. I'm being fucking gagged on right now. I'm gagging on a fish. Please come up. Please come up. Please come up. No! You fish have cocks. I mean, why not? You take that up with the scalies, my friend. You tell them that Sidon has no dick. They'll tell you you have no fucking brain. Sharks have double dicks? That's so fucking sick. You guys remember the double dick guy on, on Reddit who didn't actually have a double dick? It was, it was all fake and everyone believed him and asked him all these questions like, oh my God, how do you have a sex with two, two P9? That was wild. It took a long time for him to finally be like, yeah, guys, I was fucking with you. <laughs> like, he kind of kept it going for a while. And then he claimed he met a lady with two vaginas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spouse by technically you can join males. Women's women. I mean, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, that's that's a thing that could happen. I had a terrible mental day. Is this the right place to be? No, we're about to fight Orion. Come here. Fuck. Mm. <laughs> what are you doing? I am, this is hard. I'm not even watching and it's hard for me to watch it. Please die. What if you just died? I feel like that'd be so nice of you. I cannot believe after all that, man. Ugh, you bitch. <laughs> you fucking bitch. He loves to go in the pool when the run is fucking dead. I know, it weighs all my, yeah, and then just fucking eats me. That's how it goes. Angler fish males are tiny parasitic organisms whose only purpose is to physically fuse into the female's body, dying and leaving its testicles with her to use as at her leisure. Damn, but it says something about society. Death via become sex toy, yeah. That's not the death by snoo snoo I want. I mean, I guess after the snoo snoo, who cares, right? It depends on how you're, what your feelings are on being an organ donor. I mean, eventually all our organs are donated to the plants, not, what if you like, I don't know, contain your organs in something, you know what I mean? Does anyone remember when we used to do like the, um, we used to make bets as to when the run was gonna die? I think that was back in the Revlo days. We used to like literally every run would have like a, everyone could bet like points on where the run would die and like win like points if they were right. And that was for like Banjo. But there was also one that was like, this will be a PB, you know? So, it wasn't all bad, but. I went to a casino yesterday, speaking of betting. Since we've been watching Better Call Saul, uh, Adrian has been like, I really want to play bingo. And I'm like, you have the power. <laughs> you can, you can't, what? That was a 99.6, holy shit. Went to a casino because Adrian was like, I, I'm seeing all the, like everyone's playing bingo. I want to play bingo. And I'm like, you can play bingo. It's it's a it's a thing <laughs> that is within the possibility to do. We can we can do it together. Um, so we found a, a casino nearby that did bingo and we went there. But they were like, sorry, we do bingo at like 6.30 p.m. Of course, we're rolling up at like fucking eight or nine. Uh, so we ended up just playing some slot machines and then fucking off. I won $100, which I was pretty fucking stoked about. It was a good slots slots pull. Usually I, I, don't, I would never fucking do slots, but we we're just like, well, we came all the way here. And play, play a few slot machines, I guess, but it was good. Came out a hundred ahead. My trick was just like whenever, like I just kind of kept putting like $10 bills in and like, if I ever got to $50, I would always cash out. So like if I went above it, I would keep betting a little bit, but if I got back to 50, I just cashed out. I think I think it's fun to there's definitely like kind of a just pay money to to be entertained, you know? Like I feel like if you go there with the intention of like I'm going to make some fucking money, like uh, <laughs> you're probably going to have a bad time. But I think um I never go to a casino with money that I don't intend to just completely fucking lose. Make my brain happy. There, there is definitely a weird thing with slot machines uh, psychologically that like um, appeal to the fucking receptors in the brain. And I think a big part of that is that like, I mean, it, it's literally called the slot machine effect, I believe, which is, you know, when people are like, oh, like, why can't you just do something that's just like satisfying and just keep doing that, you know? Because eventually like you lose the kind of like, you need, for some reason we need to give something to get, to, to accept the good. Like, if we just allow good to just come in without working for it, it starts to become meaningless. But, like, slot machines are, like, the epitome of, like, the lowest amount of fucking effort to do something, which is, like, push push a button and then, yeah. But, like, if it was any less, I feel like people wouldn't do it. It's on loot boxes. Yeah, loot boxes, too. You know, and that's why there's, like, 
kind of a build up like whenever you know slot machines kind of you hit the button and it, it like it's like you know and like there, there's kind of just like a oh fuck what's gonna happen and then if it pays if it pays off it's fucking like yeah or if it doesn't it's like oh maybe next one glad gambling is illegal in most places yeah i mean it's definitely something that's easy to get addicted to yeah the danganronpa 3 yeah that's a good slot machine wish they had that in real life and also rigged i would i would go to it